Welcome back to Visceral, and today we take a look at Ty Seagal's new record, Fudge Sandwich. big fan of Ty Seagal. I buy almost all of his releases. If I were to turn the camera around to look at the shelf, you'd probably um, you know notice a bunch of them there. I've seen him a couple times. I think he's just one of these great musicians who is kind of channeling some of the garage and pop of the 60s and 70s, but not just doing it purely retro, that he's trying to do some different things, and that actually he's very capable of reproducing and even tweaking lots and lots of different sub-styles within each one of those different categories. Ty Seagal has a pretty incredible release schedule. I'm not sure how he has time to be constantly touring, but also putting out three, sometimes four records a year. Um, and it's incredible too, in that each one of these records, he usually tries to do something a little different, or it's a collaboration that's trying to push himself into new territory. He's also in another band called Fuzz. And in fact, he, I know he's taking part in other bands as well. Um, so this is a guy who really loves music. Um, I love musicians that act in the way he does where they they are trying to release as much as they can and trying to produce new and interesting things and recognizing that you know what it's not always going to be this kind of perfect statement that I'm not going to tinker away in the studio for four years trying to get this 10 songs down that I'm going to go into the studio for a weekend with some interesting musicians and we're going to knock out a record and we're going to put it out to people and then we'll see you know what, what do people think of it and maybe try some new ideas also with that kind of recording schedule or just that approach you probably will make a few mistakes here or there that every one of your experiments every one of your releases it's not going to land perfectly so this record is made up of covers and i always enjoy when a band or a musician does this because it allows them to kind of make a mixtape but instead of it just being here's a collection of songs that i really like to listen to it gives that musician opportunity to to translate this to interpret it in a way that meets their aesthetic and their style and ty Segal, like i said before he loves lots and lots of types of music and you can really see where his tastes lie in this specific record it also gives him an opportunity to kind of change these things up and see if i can take some of these popular songs and make it my own I've already said it before, I love Seagal. Um, I don't like all the songs on this record. I, I think it's a really good piece from uh, In The Red Records. It's definitely something worth picking up and I'll tell you about some of the songs I really enjoy and we'll play a little snippet of it here. There's a few at the very beginning though that I must say I just I, when I put it on the the turntable I thought oh this is gonna be a tougher ride for me. Um, he has a track Low Rider by the band War. It was an interesting way to start the record. I didn't really care for it. In fact, the first few tracks I, I didn't really uh, that didn't grab my attention. Although the third track, which is a track by John Lennon, um, "Isolation," that was from his 1970s Plastic Ono band. That's probably the first track that I thought, "Oh, okay, I see where he's going with this." Even though that one is done pretty straightforward, it sounds actually really similar to John Lennon, even the way he's delivering the vocals. We're going to do something a little different. Usually we talk about a track and we'll play you a little snippet of it just so you can get a, a, a sense of uh, you know what that piece of music is all about. Because this is a cover record, I want to play the original song, the song that Seagal is covering, and then Seagal's version of it. So you can see how much he has changed or didn't change some of these tracks. So let's actually take a look at that track we just talked about, Isolation, uh, by John Lennon. People say we got it made don't they know we're so afraid Isolation Got it made Don't they know we're so afraid Isolation My absolute favorite track off this record is the fifth song, Class War. Um, this was a track by The Dills, which was a Los Angeles-based hardcore band um, you know, singing about <laughs> overthrowing the system and pitting the rich against the poor. And what's so wonderful about it is when you listen to The Dills track, it is you know pretty much a great 70s California hardcore song. And Seagal, he process it through his Seagal system and it comes out this really cool garage kind of acoustic track. D d d he just does an excellent job with it. Oh, no. 
favorite song is a track, The Loner, which was a Neil Young song from the late 60s. And what he, I think Seagal does well on this record is he'll, it, he'll take a song that maybe was really, really fast and aggressive, just like Class War by the Dills, and he'll slow it down. He'll kind of change up the pattern, change up some of the instrumentation. For this track from the late 60s, for, from Neil Young, he uh, Seagal here really fuzzes this up. In fact, it sounds like this could have been on one of his releases with his band Fuzz. And what's really interesting about covering this and making it much more raucous, much more thrashy is that Neil Young, who in the 90s would, you know, be some, one of these figures that inspired a lot of the garage rock bands and in fact has uh, many records which are pretty loud kind of aggressive rock and roll tracks. But here we, he takes one of these older ones from Neil Young from the 60s and really gives it that treatment. He talks. And I actually had never heard of it before by a band called Gong, and it's a track called Pretty Miss Titty. Um, and when you hear the original, it's definitely a lot more psychedelic. It does eventually get into some pop leanings, but I love what Seagal does with this track. Bad. lot to enjoy on this record it's not all of them are hits but there's enough here to warrant picking up this piece and just listening and saying what can Seagal do with all of these old tracks from many many different styles it's actually quite impressive how he can make them his own and give them a new spin so I highly recommend picking it up at least checking it out on Spotify that's all for today, everyone. So tell us down below, which tracks off this record did you like the most? Are there some other cover records which are great pieces to pick up to see how a musician can rework other people's uh, material?